This is 2013 Max Mathematics A paper. Let's begin. Section 1, number 1. In this question, we need to find the radius of the circle represented by this equation. First of all, remember the general form of a circle. This is the equation of a circle with h, k as the coordinate of the center and r as the radius. So we basically need to complete the square to create these squared brackets. Let's begin with x. Since minus 4 is minus 2 times 2, we need 2 squared, which is 4. And x squared minus 4x plus 4 is x minus 2 squared. But because we added this plus 4, the value of the left hand side has changed. So we need to subtract 4 as well. Similarly, y squared plus 6y requires 9. So we need to add 9 and then subtract 9. And the first three terms can be factorized. So now we have two sets of squared brackets. So finally, we need to calculate this part. These add up to minus 25. Move it to the right hand side and it becomes plus 25, which is 5 squared. So the radius is 5. Section 1, number 2. In this question, we have three straight lines, and we are told that these three straight lines meet at one and the same point. Now, if three straight lines meet at one point, that means that two of the three lines also meet at the same point. So we basically need to find the point of intersection between these two straight lines. So let's solve these two equations simultaneously to find the x and y coordinate of the point of intersection. So the coordinates of the point of intersection are minus 1, comma, 1. Now, we do know that the third line also goes through this point of intersection. So we can substitute these values into the third equation to obtain the value of a. So the answer is a equals 2. Section 1, number 3. In this question, we need to solve this inequality. First of all, let's try to visualize what is happening in this question. Let's start by drawing a quick sketch of the left-hand side of this inequality. The graph of root 5 minus x looks like this. This is basically half a parabola tilted 90 degrees anti-clockwise. What about the right-hand side of the inequality? This is simply a straight line with the y-intercept of 1 and the slope of positive 1. Because root 5 is greater than 1, if we combine these two graphs, the y-intercept of the straight line will be below the y-intercept of the half parabola, like this. And if you look at the inequality sign, this says that the half parabola must be below the straight line. So we are interested in this region. So basically, we need to find the intersection here. And we already know that the upper limit is 5. So in order to find the intersection, we need to let the left-hand side of the inequality be equal to the right-hand side. So we need to solve root 5 minus x equals x plus 1. First, square both sides. Now we got two roots, but remember that this intersection must be in the first quadrant, meaning that its x-coordinate must be positive. So we are choosing this root. Therefore, the lower limit is 1, and this is the whole answer. Section 1, number 4.
In this question, we have a quadratic function with alpha and beta as its real root, and we need to evaluate this expression here. To solve this question quickly, you need to know two facts. One is that the sum of the two roots is equal to minus b over a, and the product of the two roots is equal to c over a, where a is the coefficient of x squared, and b is the coefficient of x, and c is the constant. So the sum of the roots is minus minus 1 over 1, which is 1, and the product of the roots is 4 over 1, which is just 4. So let's transform this expression so that this can be expressed in terms of alpha plus beta and alpha times beta. We complete the square by adding 2 alpha beta and then subtracting 2 alpha beta. This part becomes alpha plus beta squared. So now everything is expressed in terms of alpha plus beta and alpha times beta. So the final answer is 7 over 4. Section 1, number 5. In this question, we are given the values of two constants, and we need to evaluate log base 2 of a squared plus ab plus b squared. So, let's first of all transform this part. We basically want to complete the square once again. So let's add ab and then subtract ab, so that we have a squared plus 2b plus b squared. This part can be factorized. Now, what is a plus b? a plus b will be 2 root 10 over 10, which is root 10. And what is a times b? This is equal to 10 minus 2 over 4, which is 8 over 4 which is 2. a plus b squared is root 10 squared, and minus ab is 2. So 10 minus 2 is 8. So we are evaluating log base 2 of 8, and notice that 8 is 2 cubed. The exponent can be moved to the front, and log base 2 of 2 is 1. So the answer is 3. Section 2, number 1. In this question, we are given a function, which seems to be a linear function, and this function satisfies these three conditions. And in the first question, we need to determine the function f of x. So let's see what we can deduce from the first condition. Let's try performing the integration on the left hand side and see what happens. So we have arrived at a very simple equation, a plus b is 1. And next, let's work with the second condition. So now we have a slightly more complicated equation. Now, from the first equation, we know that a is 1 minus b. So let's substitute this value of a into the second equation.
Let's use the quadratic formula to solve this quadratic equation. So b is 1 plus or minus root 3. Next, let's pay attention to the third condition, which says that f of 0 is positive. So what exactly is f of 0? Let's substitute 0 into this function. Then we get b. So b must be positive. Therefore, b must be 1 plus root 3 meaning that a is 1 minus 1 plus root 3, which is minus root 3. Therefore, the function f of x is minus root 3x plus 1 plus root 3. Section 2, number 2. In this question, we are given a new function, g of x, which is equal to f of x plus c, and we need to find the minimum of this definite integral. So from the first question, we know that f of x is equal to this. So g of x is minus root 3x plus 1 plus root 3 plus c, and let this be equal to alpha. So g of x becomes minus root 3x plus alpha. Next, what is g of x squared? And let's integrate this expression. And let's differentiate this expression with respect to alpha. Now, when 4 alpha minus 4 root 3 equals 0, what is the value of alpha? Alpha is root 3. So let's substitute this value of alpha into this equation 2 times 3 minus 4 times 3 plus 8 is so this definite integral has the minimum value of 2 section 3 number 1 in this question we have a semicircle with a diameter of 6 we have point b on arc AB, and there's an angle ABP. We need to express the area of triangle APB in terms of x. We know that the area of the triangle is 1 half times AB times PB times sine x. And because AB is the diameter of this semicircle, we also know that this triangle is a right triangle. So now we can use the sine rule. So sine 90 degrees minus x over pb is sine 90 degrees over 6. Sine 90 degrees is 1. Sine 90 degrees minus x is cosine x. Therefore, pb is 6 cosine x. So let's substitute this value of pb into this. 1 half times AB is 6 and PB is 6 cosine x times sine x. So the area of triangle APB is 18 times sine x times cosine x. Section 3, number 2.
In question 2, we are given this inequality and we need to find the range of x that satisfies this inequality. So, from question 1, we know that the area of the triangle is 18 sine x cosine x. And let's divide both sides by 9. Now, remember that 2 sine x cosine x is equal to sine 2x. Therefore, the left hand side becomes sine 2x. Now, because x is an angle in a right triangle, x is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. So, 2x is between 0 degrees and 180 degrees. Or, using radians, between 0 and pi. So, within this range, sine 2x becomes root 2 over 2 when the angle 2x is pi over 4 or 45 degrees or when the angle is 3 pi over 4 or 135 degrees. So let's divide both sides by 2 and we get x equals pi over 8 and x equals 3 pi over 8. So the range of x that satisfies this inequality is less than or equal to pi over 8 and greater than or equal to 3 pi over 8. Section 3, number 3. So in the third question, we are told that PA plus PB is 3 root 6 and we need to find the area of triangle APB. So from the first question we know that the area APB is 18 times sine x cosine x. Now by definition sine x is AP over 6 and by definition cosine x is PB over 6. Therefore, triangle APB is 1 half times PA times PB. Now, using the cosine rule, we can write another equation. PA squared is AB squared plus PB squared minus 2AB times PB times cosine x. From the first question, we know that 6 cosine x is pb. Therefore, pa squared is so pa squared plus pb squared is 36. We know that pa plus pb is 3 root 6. So let's square both sides of this equation. PA squared plus PB squared is 36. So PA times PB is 9. So we can substitute this value into the equation here. So the area of the triangle is 9 over 2. And this is the final answer. And this is the end of this exam paper. See you next time.